Right guys, welcome to the channel. Right, today's review is the DigiFlavor Z1 SPS kit that was kindly sent in from Saw Small for review. Now, we've got a sleeve situation going on here. I've got a silver gray one, scallop shell. It does come in four different varieties for you. Right, so we're not gonna look around this too long, but uh, yeah, you've got some features on there and we've also got your package contents there. Scratch and check, of course. And then inside of there, you get a red box here. Right, inside the package, you get a little card that's uh, basically an envelope that's got a few different cards on here, like warranties, all of that sort of blurb as ever. There's um, a bag of, U uh, of cotton here, uh, USB cotton, I was going to say. Uh, cotton there, you also get uh, four packs of corns here, which is an awesome touch from Digi Flavor there. So you've got four different sizes, lovely jubbly. And we also get a bag full of O-rings, you try it all there, and four uh, grub screws for you. USB-C chargeware and for firmware update cable. And we also get a little user manual here. Right, there's obviously all of your protections that you'd expect to find in a regulated device as well. Right, here we are then. There's your Z1 mod and here is your tank, the Siren 3 tank. So let's have a look at the tank first. So I have already measured this one. This is 24 mil at the base and without the drip tip, it came to about 45 mil. With a drip tip on, it was, uh, I think it was about 64 mil if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 64 millimeters. Yeah, so, 510 drip tip situation going on. This is made from metal, so I don't like using it. It's far too tall, but that's what we're looking like inside of there. If I just get one off the Nico RCA, put that on, it looks um, a little bit tidier for you. Just measure the inside bore there. Some of you might be interested. Others will think it's uh, pretentious, I don't know. 3.72 millimeters there. Excuse the moisture, this has recently been cleaned. Right, so on the top, you've got a step down approach. Uh, we've also got something to grab hold of there. Bayonet fitting, quarter of a turn. There you go. Right, notches on here because it is a bayonet. We've got a little gasket around there, and the notches marry up with the cutouts on uh, the chimney there. Kidney shaped juice filling ports, one on each side, no problems at all with that. Right, just measure this one to see if they're the same. 3.58 more or less and uh, so to put the top cap back on just like that back it's so easy to put on or off and on it's uh, lovely uh, I really do like it right look on the bottom then see if we can get this to focus today what have we got we got siren for three digi flavor designed uh, by digi flavor made in China you can read that gold plated positive pin peak insulator as ever if you're going to be using it on a hybrid make sure that, that is protruding just like this one is use at your own risk right adjustable airflow with this so we have got stoppers on either side just like that and you can open up that's your tightest um, hole there looks like probably 0.8 mil and then we go up in steps uh, you can one, two, three, four, five. So you've got four, uh, five holes there, but you can do them independently as well. There you go. There's your largest hole. One, two, three, four, five. So nice tolerances uh, to the O-rings on here. Not sure if that comes off. It probably will do, but we're not going to take it off now. So unscrew from the base. There is the matching design, a uh, little bit of nearly, nearly going down the base as well. Inside the chimney, that's what we're looking like inside of there. A little bit of uh, doming around the edges, but more or less flat. See if we can get in on the thread in there. This piece will come off. We've got the O-ring around there. There is a spare glass in here as well. I forgot to uh, tell you. Uh, there's the glass there, which is good. Yeah, so there's the uh, logo on there, the Siren logo. Onto the deck then. So here we are. It is very similar to the the Siren V2, we'll get that one out in a minute. But have a quick look around it. So we've got the core gets situated in the middle and you have your leads going opposite ways, much like the V2. So let's just get in a little bit closer for you. 
The difference on here though, we've got uh, flatheads on the top, uh, so they go downwards to trap your leads, uh, just like that. The airflow, still got the three hole situations going on here, peak insulator separating the positive and negative. There's your wicking ports there, so we've got no retainer ring, so you'll just let your cotton hang down in here. So it is a GTA style deck, as they say, because uh, the deck is raised uh, from the base. So the juice flows down and then it's wicked up from the bottom just like that. Right, we get the V2 out and have a look at that. So different drip tip situation as you can see there. Same old bayonet going on. This one is 22 millimetres. I think they did do a 24 as well though, but this is the one that I had. Yeah, the only difference really is that the screws come from the side, which can deform your legs on the V2, but uh, very similar indeed, as you can just see here. Right, on to the star of the show then, guys. We've got the Digiflavor Z1 mod here. So there's the Digiflavor logo held on by a couple of uh, Allen screws. You can take them off, put them around the other way if you were using finger fire or thumb fire or if you're left or right-handed. We've got the scallop shell uh, patterns going on there. Very nice colours we're getting on both sides. So really loving the look of that. We've got three slits and there's your battery tube there. I think this is press fit. I haven't tried to get it out. It doesn't move though, so I think it's just in there, this uh, one. There's some battery venting on the bottom, three holes there. We've got designed by Digiflavor, made in China, usual markings, Z1 logo there, and there's a USB-C port. Right, serial number there. And on the side, inside of here, a nice curvatures going on. Uh, we've got a spring-loaded 510 there. Yeah, nice and spring-loaded. A couple of Allen screws there if you wanted to take it apart, if you know what you're actually doing. And um, let's put the tank on, show you what it looks like. This will hold 24 mils, 25s don't fit, guys. So that's what we look like as an actual kit. So very snazzy, it is when you haven't got the drip tip on anyway. Screw top, there you go, so we've got negative on there. And we've got a couple of threads as you can just see there. Yeah, so it's not too bad at all with this. Right, just look inside of there, have got the positive clearly marked, which is very good to see. I do like that. There you go, you can just see it now. So positive down, 18650, I've got a VCT 5A. It is a bit of spring action going on in there. And you just push down, go back first, and then go towards you. It's not many threads as you've just seen. Right, say no atty because we haven't got one in here at the moment. Look at the screen layout then. There's your wattage, there's your resistance and there's your voltage there and there's your battery marker. Right, three clips, we've got three modes with this. Right, voltage, put it in voltage, we go from 0.5 or one to 8.5 volts, but the scroll on here really is slow guys, but uh, I'm not gonna go all the way, but you can just see there, it takes about 30 seconds to get all the way. So yeah, that is a bit of a con, one, two, three, Put it into power mode, it's the mode I leave it in. So we've got five watts and lovely fast scroll with power all the way up to 80 watts, back to five, one, two, three. And bypass mode, which basically just uses the voltage left in your battery. So that's it, that's it guys, nice quick and easy menu for you. Five clicks turns it off.
What's up guys, we are up top. We have the DigiFlavor Z1 SBS kit. Welcome to the channel guys and thanks for watching the download section and the rebuild for the Siren 3 RTA which comes as part of this uh, Z1 kit. So yeah, you're getting a lot of uh, stuff for your money with this one. It was kindly sent over from Source More for the purpose of the review. So if you want to check it out, head over there because they do very reasonable prices guys. Right, so here we are then, we've got the Siren 3 RTA and we have the Z1 mod. Right, what are my thoughts with them? Well, I'll talk about them both as I'm going and I'm not just going to stick to one or the other, but um, yeah, we'll start off with the, the tank because I showed you the differences down low. If you're only just watching the up top, here is the original Siren 2. Uh, I'd never had the Siren 1, uh, but uh, this one's 22 mil. But I'm, I'm sure if I remember correctly, they did a 24 mil as well. But I've got the 22 mil version here. And as far as I can tell, the only difference that I could see was that the screws are, are, are screwed in from the t top, really. There's, yeah, there's some minor like differences with the design and stuff like that, but the airflow is pretty much the same. And you've still got the three holes underneath. But um, yeah, so not much of a, I would have said this is a 1.5, not really a, a version three, but there you go. Right, so fit and finish build quality and all of that jazz then, guys. Um, Right, it's Digi Flavor, which means it's Geek Vape because basically it's the sister company of Geek Vape and they generally knock things out of the park. With this kit, uh, there's no exception, guys, it's absolutely awesome. The tank, I love the bayonet on here, that is so easy to do off and on, just like that. Nice paintwork on here, we've got the sandblasted effect paint going on, so no problems there. Nice bit of knurling around there to help you assist it, but that really is easy to do. Look how little effort, but it's it's actually there though. It's not going to inadvertently come off uh, or anything like that, but it's really good tolerances they've done there. I'm really happy with it. One niggle I have got is this drip tip is absolutely awful. It's too big and it's made from metal and I can't vape on it, guys. Um, so yeah, that it just makes the, the actual overall appearance look a bit ugly in my opinion. So yeah, the Drip tips going. I have tried it. It doesn't give any better flavour than anyone else, uh, other ones I'm using. I'm borrowing one here, a short stubby one, because I think uh, you would agree it looks a lot better. So that's what we're going to carry on using. So yeah, we got the Siren logo on there, so minimalist design, so no problems at all with the fit and finish of the tank. As for the mod, I think it looks really good it is pretty well finished there was when i first got it there was some like muck or something around the edge of like the the sticker panel whatever it is um, on here this isn't the stab with the the, the scallop shell one so um yes it's um it looks really good uh i don't know what it is i'm not going to peel it off just to wreck it just for the purpose of the review but um it all looks very good. The buttons are clicky, the screen's nice and bright, albeit a little bit small. And uh, But yeah, the appearance, fit and finish, build quality of all of it is very good. The threads on the battery cap are good as well. So no dramas there at all. As I already mentioned with the Siren 3, the build deck and everything is more or less the same as the version 2, apart from the screws going, so it's not going to deform your legs. So that is a good thing. Um, so yeah, they obviously thought nothing wrong with the V2, but we'll just put a couple of uh, adjustments to it uh, and we'll put it as a version 3 and include it with the SZ1 kit. So there you go then. Right, the mod, nice and simple. I don't like temperature control and all of that fancy power curve rubbish. So we've got voltage, wattage and bypass mode, which is awesome. The one niggle with the mod, it's um, the scrolling. When you're in voltage mode, it literally takes 30 seconds to get from like the, the start to the finish, 8.5 volts or whatever it is. Uh, so that is definitely a con. It should start going up in 0.5s or 1s if you hold your finger down. I'm not sure quite why they've done that because with wattage mode, it goes up really fastly uh, up to the higher wattages. So, yeah, not sure what's going on there, Digiflavor, but that is a, a bit of a con for it. But um, if you're just going to use wattage mode, you're not going to encounter those issues because it works perfectly well, the scrolling. And like I say, that screen, nice and bright, no issues 
at all for it. Albeit the font on the top uh, row, like the voltage and the resistance is a little bit small, but I've got no problems seeing it, especially where I'm, when I'm wearing my glasses, which I think I'm going to start doing because I'm getting a little bit blind in my old age. And it's uh, sunny and these are reactor like ones, so that's why we got them on, guys. But um, anyway, let's have a two, let's stop waffling about it. Uh, and have a little two. 0.65 it's coming out the cord I've got in here, one of the ones from Nature Vape. So here we go, 15.5 watts. Uh, airflow. Uh, what should we do? Should we do an airflow with all of them open? I could probably take it off the mod to do that actually. But yeah, let's just show you how airy it is. Proper direct to lung, you can see that without me having to take a pull. And then you can easily adjust it round if you want a more restrictive direct to lung, that's fine. I've been rocking this uh, using the single hole though, because this is a mouth to lung tank primarily, so that's what we're gonna do. But with the larger hole open, still a little bit airy for me. I like to knock it down uh, to about the third one up, but I'll just put the pinhole one uh, on for you, which I believe it's 0.8 of a mil. and that is proper tight. But we'll just give you a puff with the third hole up. I'm sorry I don't know the measurements, but if I do know them, I'll put them on the screen for you. Nice little pop there, I love it when they do that. So that's the third hole up. Let's just put it back to the smallest one. Absolutely tight as a proverbial that one is. Uh, I don't know how anyone can vape it that tight. Fourth one up. See, my preference is lovely air bubbles coming up there is a loose mouth to lung. So I prefer the, the larger holes. Here's the largest hole on its own. There you go, you're getting some direct along with that. But um, just get some of those bubbles in action. It wicks like an absolute champion, this does. We'll put it up to the third hole again because that's the one I enjoy. Really good popping flavour I'm getting. And just I really do want you to see those bubbles coming up because um, it's very satisfying when you get a tank wicking like that. Do love GTA style. Uh, tanks with the, so you can hang the cotton in there you can put it down to the base if you uh, want to I always like to leave mine slightly shorter though just uh, for some habit from using direct to lungs a lot of the time but it really has no troubles wicking at all and the flavor with this I'll give it a good 8.5 out of 10 really is a cracking amount to lung vape this one Don't think it's quite as good as the Berserker Mini version 2 or my K-Fun Lite Plus though, but um, as it's included in the kit, um, I think you, you can't grumble. It's a really nice vape, nice and tight across the board. You can have it nice and loose, but it does feel like a true mouth to lung vape you're getting. So the tank definitely gets a big thumbs up. As for the mod, I've had no troubles with it at all uh, with the wattage. We'll just put a direct to lung on now for the interest of science. That It would be nice if it could go up to 26, but it's, it's not going to, so 24 is your max. So I'll have to put the Reload S on. Put it out to 80 watts, see what happens, shall we? A bit too much for, for that call. We'll put it down to 60 watts. And that hits very well. So it hits very well in uh, mouth to mode around 10 to 20 watts and it also does hit up there. If you're going to be rocking it up 60, 80 watts, the battery life is not going to last more than two or three hours if you're vaping uh, quite a lot. But if you're um, vaping it in mouth to lung mode, 10, 25 watts, something like that, you're going to get most of the day out of it. If you use something like a um, Samsung 30Q, or a VCT5A, Sony VCT5A, something like that, with a 2500 Ma or a 3000 Ma battery. They're the two batteries I recommend uh, for a um, 18650 or a Molly Cell P26A. I've got some of those too. 
But overall, the kit, I think it looks awesome. Uh, both the tank and the mod, it matches very well, especially if you find a drip tip of your own. One little niggle, I think it should have come with a, a spare drip tip, a, a Delrin one, something like that, because there's going to be a lot of people out there that don't like vaping with metal in their mouth. So, yeah, that is a, a thing. Got no issues with the battery cap or anything. Uh, it's got USB-C charging. To be honest, I haven't used it. I always advocate charging your external batteries on an external battery uh, charger, basically. Uh, but yeah, not really any other cons for it, really. Uh, that is about it, guys. I think it gets a big thumbs up. Kindly sent over by Source More, so big thanks for that, uh, Nancy, for that. It's really appreciated. So that is the end of the review, guys. So if you enjoyed it, please give a thumbs up. That would be awesome. If you're new around these parts, you want to see some more, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as well. You can find me on social media and I've got a website if you want to check that one out. Right, guys, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you on the next review. All right, cheers.